Welcome, everybody, to episode 519 of Just Joshing. I'm your host, Joshua Pantelaresco. I write stuff in podcasts, too. Tonight, he is back for more. Ron Friedman is back for more punishment, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. 519, that's quite a number. That is a number, I know. It, it, it's been, it, it's, it's going up faster now because I'm doing a lot more of these. Um, it's growing. I'm very close to becoming an affiliate on Twitch. I'm very, very close to that, so I'm really, really happy about that. So how is the uh, Twitch going on? I'm asking because I have a, a YouTube channel. I don't know if I should also put the same video on Twitch. Um, Twitch is a different animal. Like it's, you can do some of the same things. Um, you can do some of the same things on on Twitch. You can do YouTube, but it's meant to be a live streaming experience every time. Um, it has increased the interactivity of my interviews sometimes, depending on who shows up and who does not. Um, it. It can it can very much uh, impact how an interview goes in sometimes really really cool ways. Not yet. I'm waiting for that. There'll be one last thing I'll be checking up here before we start. But but it, it's a cool community. Like it's a very video game centric community, and it's it's very very fun to deal with people that are just doing things. The cool thing about streamers is that they do one thing usually exceptionally well. It's a really good business lesson, actually, watching them perform because they focus on one thing and they do it very, very well. I have one stream I watch. All she does is play Minecraft, but she's a really entertaining person and she has a lot of fun. She has a good community. I actually think for authors, Twitch is a great way to build your own community up, trying to find like-minded people and interacting with them. I mean, you have to get involved, too, and interact with different boards and streams as well, but it's it's really, really cool. It's really, really cool um, platform. YouTube doesn't work like that. YouTube, what I've done with YouTube, uh, as you notice, is I do a couple clips from each interview. Maybe I'll use this as the clip for this interview, one of the clips for this interview right here, right now. And I'll do this clip and I will, I will, you know, put it up on my YouTube as an advertisement. Then when the, when it runs its course on Twitch, I put it straight to the YouTube as an archive, but also just as, so I'm constantly releasing new content on, on YouTube. I'm, I'm taking the content I have from Twitch and I'm breaking it down into little, pe little bite-sized pieces for people to jump into. I literally today made a, uh, I did a conversation with Kat Flannery about a week and a little bit over two weeks ago. And in that conversation, we talked about poker. There's just one little scene where we talked about poker. So I okay. took that whole thing and I, I took that whole thing and I, uh, I put that as a YouTube clip because that's a cool little like a cool little aside. I, I want. So what I've been doing is I've been letting people kind of see it. And it's been interesting kind of to watch my algorithms on YouTube when I first like I'm still still some clips that get nothing. But then there's a lot of these interviews are just slowly like getting spot shots here, shots there, shots here, starts there. Every once in a while, I'll get a clip that spikes 50, 50 views. Like I, I had one, I just like, and I still don't know what I did. Just the way the algorithms work that day, I guess I don't know. Uh, I, I go away, and and people come back, and it's like fifty clips. Holy shit! Like, who, like who watched this and why? But a lot of people did, and so I'm watching myself slowly becoming acclimated. My numbers have stopped. Uh, have they? They stopped at like 104 for a bit. Now they're going back up again, little by little, on my YouTube. I'm that close to being an affiliate on Twitch, so it's it's growing. Um, no, it's I'm asking because one of the things I'm doing is I'm running a YouTube channel related to my blog and my writing. Uh, it's called uh, Science Sci-Fi. It's about yeah. combining science and science fiction. Uh, I think typically it have between a hundred and something and a thousand and something views for each video, but it's more uh, lecture structure. It's like a, it's more similar to lecture I'm given in in, in conventions. But instead of a, an hour or 45 minutes, it's 20 minutes lectures. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm, I, I'm trying to evaluate if this may work in Twitch. Twitch requires, like, okay, so what we're doing here is an interview. So we're doing something, right? And there's a chance for the audience to interact, right? So is what you're doing interactive in any way, shape, or form? If the answer is yes, then maybe, but if you're going to stream at least an hour, like you'd be looking at an hour or even longer activities. There are people that stream for like four hours, five hours, easy, right? And 
that's a big part of the that's a big part of the environment and the culture there so if you're just you can just talk for a little bit like like we can just talk and i've done a just talking show there but i don't think you can do that every time i'm not sure as interesting as you are i'm not sure unless you structured it a certain way um i'm not sure that would have staying power on twitch but let's say for example because i know you like playing games you came up with like a way to play like a tabletop rpg on twitch that yeah, would that this, work? One, this is an interview it's not a game i, I see it's <laughs> no, no, no i, I get it but what i'm saying what i'm what i'm saying is like if you came up with something like that <coughs> Ooh, salt down throat square here yeah so in youtube if i have something like this i, I cut it off and do it again yeah well we're live so this is this is this is uh you can't do that yeah i can't do that no um but uh that's the thing right you're doing a live presentation on twitch it's live it's not designed for like a polished i mean you can do that in youtube like youtube's great for that and and hey metamorphosis hey bro what's up Let's see if we got a visitor right now no i just started it though it's all good so and and you know you're starting to become well known is when people actually start trolling you, which is fine, <laughs> right? But you know it, it's it's what it is. But like with Twitch, like and that's the thing, right? It's an, we're doing an interactive experience that people can interact with you, uh, you know. But you know that's it. That's how it. That's how. Um, that's how you. Uh, this is how this works. Whereas on YouTube, um, you know, and the and the thing about that is right this is an interactive thing that someone can interact with troll i got my troll here nice but i mean that's part of the deal youtube you do a presentation people can come see you come watch you do whatever that case may be right um and you yeah. probably can lots of people <laughs> see okay but i mean that's uh, but, i mean that's that's the thing Right, you you see the you you see the interaction. You see people coming in, and coming on board, and, and you you play with it as you do. And this is what this is what the uh, um that's what that's what happens. Whereas like YouTube, you can do like a presentation. You can do like you can do a conversation. You can you can actually uh, set a presentation, do it, hit a target audience, and right. Whereas here, whereas here um twitch not so much you get a lot of that right as you can see mez no one will watch it including meta here he, he's not watching this at all but uh that's that's the difference like twitch twitch creates a lot more of an environment where people can come in and interact and talk to you and and do their thing um youtube is a lot more you can do a lot more of a polished presentation like nickel nickel popovich she does a really cool like she does cool writing stuff like that to do like these little 10 20 minute clips and they work just fine on youtube twitch requires i thought like okay if you're gonna do it how can i interact with the audience while this is going on how can i make it uh roll right and mark watson's watching so hey mark how you doing um one quick second there before we go back to this so he's amazed at your chair, by the way, Ron. Mark is totally amazed at your chair, at the quality of your it's chair. It's a gaming chair, so if it's a gaming channel, uh... yeah, so totally right, totally. And uh, but that's that's the thing, right? It, it's there's a difference, right? Now, if you can come up with an interactive thing, like something you can do interactive with the audience, right? And you can actually get involved with it and actually uh, have a back and forth. And you could do it for let's say at least an hour then i think twitch would be something you'd, you'd want um if not if you're not if you're not um uh doing anything that's really interactive i don't think twitch is the way for you to go that's just my opinion yeah yeah so what yeah what i'm trying to do i have a blog on Quera. that one is doing very well like uh, last time i spoke with you about a month ago i had the uh, 2.8 million views now it's 2.9 million views so it's been like in this month there have been more than a hundred thousand so it's grown congrats man 
yeah, and uh, YouTube, I'm just beginning, so it's not anywhere near, but still I get, uh, I don't know, between a thousand, I don't know, a hundred and a thousand per video. But those are, I typically pick a topic and talk about it for 15, 20 minutes uh, with slides. Yeah. Similar to what I do in presentation. So that's what I'm trying to measure. If something like this could also work in other platforms, or should I just stick with YouTube for now? So Mark is here, Mark's here for the chair, and that you and he says you're prepared for anything. By the way, see. Which okay. Is yeah. Sure. Yeah. I typically write about space. So if you have any question about space, uh, shoot. Yeah. I, I don't. I, don't, I can yeah. say that the most annoying question I get uh, or people are asking, uh, like I'm trying to promote the idea that yeah we should go to Mars. We should start a space program and some people have the well, what other people are calling the fix our planet first uh, fallacy it's that let's not go to space not do anything not go to mars because it costs a lot of money let's fix everything on earth first uh, well so, uh, so, let, let, so you know, i'm of two minds on this so let, 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 me, let me let me let me explain my my two minds on this. So my I, I in principle in in theory I agree with you. Like I agree with you. We should be looking at outer space. My problem is we still we very much have a commercial way of how we do technology medicine. There's a certain disposability to our culture that we as we have. Once upon a time we used to make stuff that was built to last. Once upon a time we used to build stuff that that you know, like wouldn't break down. It wasn't Ikea, it wasn't Walmart. Like we have become very much slaves to convenience. So for me, when I look at going into outer space, I'm not sure that that mentality is a good idea going up into orbit. On the flip side, we have to grow. Like I, I look at it kind of like, we should be going to explore, seeking, finding, and discovering new things because that's we're explorers as much as we're anything else. So we need to like, you know, explore and do cool things and and you know, that's that's what I feel. But I mean, I don't know if uh as we sit on our mindset right now that we're actually able to do it. Does that make sense? No. No. Okay. Correct. Able to do it. Because what do you mean able to do it? We've been doing what, it. What, because we everything like everything is about everything is about uh um again, we build cars that are not as efficient. We build uh food that's not like we, we do things that aren't we, we our things are designed to be disposed of all the time. I cannot help but think when we get to some uh, as uh, an environment as unforgiving as space. That that kind of way of building, um, that kind of way of building things will actually like you know be good for us. I, I, I last thing I really want is some like like some made in China or like old, the old school concept of the the old third world party made something go wrong out in outer space. And I think we we have we have become we have a mindset of convenience, not necessarily what's the best thing for us. If that's that's where I'm get, coming from, it's not the technological wherewithal. We've we've had that. We, we we have that. It's the can we move past how we do business today and kind of like go back to maybe something where it was a little bit more efficient. So we say little, that the horse and wagon were more efficient and they last longer than let's say a Toyota I, 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 today. I, I'm I'm saying that a car the car's fuel efficiency. When I'm seeing in magazines talking about the same fuel efficiency problems from 50 years ago today, when the technology is already better and what would, is far better than that, as an example, yeah. right? Um, when we're having those problems on a commercial level, we tend to put, like I said, I just think we just we have a convenience mindset, and I and I tend to think like we we apply that to everything. It's not the technical knowledge. It's how we do business that worries me more than anything else. We have, again, technologically, we can like there's been incredible what's come about in the last few years. But commercialize, but how we commercialize some of those things, 
some not some we make these things sometimes a lot more inefficient you know what i mean then they then i don't know when you go to an environment like outer space that's what you want i i don't want necessarily a, a rocket ship that, that runs just on gasoline and i'm not and that's like a very crude like not accurate well, example well, well, it will not work in space because simply for the fact that there is no oxygen over there yeah so. i know i know but, but I, 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 I kind I, of disagree. I, 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 Are you I, saying that a Model T in the 1900 lasts longer than a modern car? The outside does. The it was designed for 10 years or so in a modern car. What was it? Look, if you want, like, the, with the old Volkswagens from, like, the 30s still run. Cars today that are made today will not last that long. If they are maintained. Yeah, but even, but even, yeah. Assuming the same maintenance, the ones from the '30s last longer than our cars today. No, if you Are, maintain it the same, it will last the same. No, it won't. <laughs> they go. To, my uncle's a mechanic, man. They don't. They don't last as long. They they're designed again. They're they're not designed to last like they were back. I use the cars easiest example for me because I know this. They were built with more of a design to last. It doesn't mean again. There's some things are better today. There are definitely like engines are more efficient today for sure but we build stuff more to break down a lot more now a lot a lot more, a lot more on disposability than it was built back then we know something's better for sure but we don't build things to last either and i i it, it's it's i guess that's kind of where i'm at it's like i don't i really don't know We'd have to go. I think we'd have to go back a little bit on mindset in terms of building things to last if we really want to do space right. Especially if we're thinking about things like going to Mars and terraforming and colonization. And I think that's it. We, we'd have to change how we do business. And until that happens, right? Okay, that's a different approach than what I've seen before. Typically. What people are saying, uh, no, space costs a lot of money. We should yes. invest instead in fighting global warming or fix poverty or stuff like that. Saying, oh, we need to go to the old way of building machine that lasts longer before we go to space. This is an approach I never heard before. So you're unique in this. No, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. glad. No, I, I, no, it just, I just, again, just, it, we don't build things to last like, yeah, yeah heck, you can look at housing. Look how we built houses today in comparison. Like they, we don't build them the last like they did. Now, again, so I'm not saying from a technological standpoint we haven't evolved. We have significantly, but we don't. We don't have, and, and some of that probably is where that where I'm talking about mindset. In terms of cost of space, the cost has been going down for a very like it's been getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper as the decades have gone by. When I when they were looking at not, yeah, that's not actually not entirely true. It was getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper cheaper from when we started flying since the Wright brother flew over mm -hmm. the, the cliff and I don't know crossed the Atlantic. So airplane become better and better and first space flight from the first Sputnik until Apollo become better and better and cheaper and cheaper per kilogram. And but after we hit we got to the Apollo level we stay for more than 40 years at the plateau like the cost of launching one kilogram to space stay for more than 40 years at about 40 or sorry about ten thousand dollar per kilogram and the whole capacity of humanity to everywhere on the planet so all the countries together to launch payload to orbit or to space was something like a few hundred tons maybe 500 tons a year uh, humans couldn't go beyond low Earth orbit. So we were stagnated for a very long time. This has just started to change recently. And I, I call it a new space race. You know, uh, I think the most uh, known example is SpaceX, but it's not just them. It started with the X Prize. And right now, prices are starting to go down. So now we stand at about $2,000 per kilogram. And they are being spaceships are being constructed right now that may push the price even lower and the capacity even higher. So, well, I, I, of, I remember watching this on the news. So, we, we, we were so it's not going better. It, we were pretty, I mean, there were, there were missions like uh, 
all the NASA rovers and the Voyager and the space telescopes, uh, the mission to Pl uh, Pluto, robotic missions that were very successful and achieve a lot of scientific knowledge. But in terms of capacity, how much we can launch, what is the cost and launch, we were stagnated for more than 40 years, nearly 50 years. There was no, no improvement. But okay, so then let me ask you this. When so when the news reports were talking about I, I saw this, I can't remember where I saw this, but they were talking about a plane that was actually going to the moon. Is it like a tour somewhere like that? It yeah. was about five years ago, I think. Right? Yeah, no, actually I, I registered to it too, man. There's a program called the Dear Moon that yeah. uh, in 2023, at least this is the plan, to go not to land on the moon, but to go in an orbit around the moon and back to Earth. Mm -hmm. It's about a one week tour. And this actually, by if it will come through, uh, this will be the furthest humans ever got. If it's yeah. going to be even further away than the Apollo mission, so whoever is going to be on the spaceship or will make history. Going to be the and yeah. so what happened right now? Uh, I forgot the name of the guy. There is a Japanese billionaire. He bought uh, tickets and he's going to take like ten or twelve people with him, artist, and registration. And it actually takes place right now. I think the mid. Uh, mid uh, March, March 15th. So I think I've already more than 100,000 people registered. My, I, I'm included. Yes. But uh, they're going to pick something like 10 or 11 or 12. Or something. And then potentially, if uh, SpaceX, the company SpaceX is currently building a new spacecraft called Starship. If Starship is successful, it'll be able to launch a few times to orbit and it will be rated as human rated that means it will be possible to launch humans with it then the plan is to launch this mission in 2023 so it's only two and a half years in the future yeah, yeah so i mean we've come like, like like i said it's come a long way because i remember read it was in a science fiction book that i read called oxygen it was, they were talking about the cost like they literally had a uh I remember this, they had an essay on the very back of the book, which is about the cost of going into outer space, right? And and it was it was a really big astronomical number that when we put it all together, and it was like, something like per person was like $250 million at that time. So, I mean, when you're talking about like, it's going, it is going down significantly and it's becoming cheaper and for two and a half years away, that's, it's exciting. I, I, I I'm, I'm, I mean, I should probably put my name. If it's not too late, I should put my name in. You think I have a chance? <laughs> Dude, what the, my... Is it too? If it's unless it's too late, should I put my name and maybe have a chance? Because that 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 is a that would be a cool thing, like you know, to um to be one. Of the first dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is a comment here. You are not Elon Musk. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, not. yeah, yeah. No, I, he's I, the I, one doing it. Not yeah, I, I'm not Elon Musk. I don't have the money. If I did, I, I'd, I'd happily do it um you know it, it's one of those things where um yeah so like like i said we uh it's an exciting thing like i said it has changed a lot in in the next 10 years in terms of knowledge like i mean even when i was in high school technology was doubling quicker and quicker and quicker now no one i don't know if anyone can actually keep up with it anymore because it's, it's just it's a constant evolution all the way yeah i think uh, the general phrase is that uh, the last person who knew everything was leonardo da vinci uh, now we just have too much knowledge and no one person can know everything no which is cool because that means everybody can specialize in stuff you know so um you think we're gonna live to see you think we're gonna live to see a colonization of the moon and mars you, you think you're gonna live long enough to see it can we yeah. talk about you living, living i think forever? it's uh, inevitable unless our civilization collapse and it Wait. may collapse. It's not very stable right now. No, it's fragile. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very fragile right if now. If we will manage to survive a few more decades, maybe 100 years then, or 50 years, then yes, we are going to see colonies on the moon and Mars and potentially also in the asteroid belt, uh, like a rotating space station. Actually, this is going to be a lot more convenient than going to Mars, but also a lot more expensive. Yeah. Uh, something like O'Neill on cylinder. These are uh, like Babylon 5. These are used yeah. space station that are rotating and I create artificial gravity that are very yeah, similar no. to the condition here on Earth. 
No, I really, I really, really like Babylon Five. Like, really, I thought it did a really good job of showing like how something like that might theoretically work. But I also know they had a lot of good minds working on that design stuff. No, like the the space station. So, do you think we're going to be doing long voyages? Like, like we've always talked about like the science fiction classic stuff of colonization Mars and and the Moon because they're so close. But I mean. Do you see like the long, the long ships, the hibernations going into like the the unknown galaxy, kind of yeah. thing happening? Maybe, maybe not. Is, uh, the nearest galaxy is the Andromeda. It's about two, at I believe, two million. Hello, two million light years. I, I'm just throwing a number. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a not. huge, huge difference. I think I think first phase we are going to establish some human uh, again assuming we are not collapsing or there is no extinction event and there is a good chance that we actually become extinct in the next hundred years there are a lot of risk factors they're going from it's about 15, I, I, I checked it was about 15 to 20 percent right now so it, it depends that uh, the, the, those are some estimation but assuming we are not managed to extinct ourselves or a third party uh, something else is going to cause us to be extinct or end that our civilization will not collapse or become stagnated, then I first stage is going to be colonizing or settle the solar system. That's going to be Mars, the moon, asteroid belt, space stations. So once you have a huge space station similar to Babylon 5, these things, if they can accelerate to a, a significant fraction of the speed of light, even let's say 1% or 5%, then they can go to other star systems like alpha centauri it's 4.2 light years from here so if you are five percent the speed of fly you can get there in 80 something years so if you have a self-sustained space station with a nuclear or fusion power that can last for 100 years then just send the whole thing to another star system uh, Maybe I should do a video about interstellar. So the second phase, yeah, after the solar system is going to other star systems, going to other galaxies that I don't know, it's too, too far in the future. Ah, well, you never. Know, well, like, so, Star only got to one small portion of our uh, quadrant, quadrant in the galaxy quadrant. It didn't even go to the other side of the galaxy. Uh, I don't know. Ad Asimov Foundation was talking about a galactic empire. I don't think there are a lot of science fiction stories that are talking about uh, multi-galactic civilizations. No, but I mean, it's, it, but again, just it's based on knowledge we have. I, I at the time, I, I, I'm, cert, I'm certain some, well, I mean, unless you count Star Wars. Star Wars, you might have a multi-galactic. No, it, no, it's only galac one galaxy. One galaxy, okay. okay. Galactic <laughs> Empire. <laughs> That's a... Okay. The empire is. Uh, I, 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 th I think I think empire. I, I think empire. The scope of size. I mean, like I mean, something like I. I don't even know if you could have an empire. I mean, honestly, we haven't figured out how to do an uh, an empire that can cover the whole earth yet. We've never been able to do it, right? And so I mean, a multi federation of planets or a uh, a gal. I don't know. I I I feel I feel. It's kind of like putting marbles in a corner. I'm not sure you can actually do that for any length of time before the marbles just want to go everywhere it wants to go. Um, that's you know that's just kind of my I don't know. Like I said, I I, I we have a tendency we, we we tend we have a tendency to struggle with each other, and sometimes it leads to good things. Sometimes not so good things. It really depends on. It really depends on on how much we're willing to understand each other. Yeah, Wait. I think it's uh, yeah. They're probably going to split. Like, if we go back, uh, we have reference. It's the edge of exploration. So we have uh, European empires, like the British Empire, the French, the Spanish. They established colonies. This colony will belong to that empire for uh, like we are living in Canada, so it was part of the British Empire. But after a couple of hundred years, they broke apart. Sometimes peacefully, sometimes less peacefully. <laughs> And then each one is going on its own way. So it's probably going to be like that. Like if we have a colony on Mars or a city on Mars, um, it, it probably after a couple of hundred years, they may decide to, yeah, we don't want to be part of Earth. We will be our own independent planet. Or oh, yeah. System. I mean, that's, 
again, yeah, that exception to grow and become something else, which everything changes, right? Hmm. You know, I, I get, you're romantic when it comes to technology, I think. Like, 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 yeah, like in that technology optimist, I wouldn't say romantic. Romantic, it's what? like looking at the, in the past. No, 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 romantic, a romantic is, is, you know, maybe an idealist, right? I, I think, I think, honestly, it's not, I, romantic's not necessarily about the past. Past, maybe somewhat, but I, I, I think you're the kind of guy, like, that looks at this technology, all the good that can come from it, and you can say, well, this is what we might become. Which I think is actually a hallmark of a great science fiction writer, actually, um, and also a great scientist, a great explorer, because it's about science. Ultimately, is about possibility, about how, understanding how the world works, and within that, imagine new worlds. I mean, that's 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 nature of not just good science fiction, but good science itself. Yep, yeah. and yeah. actually, there, I think there is a lot of correlation or synergy between science fiction and science which is what i'm trying to do in the channel that's the next video i'm planning to release yes yeah, so, so what's your so science what, what i'm trying to say that the, the relation between science and science fiction uh, on one hand uh, if you read a new article in a scientific america or in some magazines this may oh this is a cool idea maybe i should write a story about that like a, a michael Crichton, uh, i don't know in the 1990s or 1980s he read an article that maybe it would be possible um, to find dinosaurs dna in an amber and maybe it reintroduce dinosaurs to earth and hence you have jurassic park so science inspires science fiction and go the other a way time, a lot of time it's going the other way around that science fiction inspire scientists or engineers or visionaries and somebody here spoke earlier about elon musk he was inspired by some science fiction story i think the one of them is asimov's foundation in asimov foundation that's a story from the 1940s on 1950s that there was a galactic empire but uh, one guy uh, harry Solomon, he predicted that the empire is about to collapse so he chose a number of scientists and they established a colony on one planet, a remote planet, they call it the foundation, and they preserve all the human knowledge in this planet. So when the time came and the empire indeed collapsed, they were able to reignite science and re-establish re a new civilization. Mm -hmm. So he, this is one of the books he was inspired and this is one of the reasons he established his company SpaceX also also established by other books some of them are science fiction some not like Robert Heinlein the moon is a harsh mistress uh, Star Wars and Star Trek of course so that way you have science fiction so if somebody write a intriguing idea in science fiction about some vision of the future this can inspire other people to try to make or learn from this story and try to improve the world and make a better world in a direction that goes together with the story we are, we are a creature the way the way the human brain works we understand stories we love stories so by storytelling you can influence the future of humanity and what i'm trying to do or what i'm trying to say and not only me also others is that science fiction it could be either a cautionary story like in 1984 it's a cautionary story don't do that or uh, that's something negative about the dictatorship or totalitarian regime, or it could be something more positive like Star Trek. Yeah, instead of staying here confined to Earth, let's establish a federation of planets and go to other star systems, speak with other species and build a better world, a world without scarcity, without poverty. Uh, so science fiction can inspire science. Arthur C. Clarke inspired the field of artificial intelligence uh, when he did the Space Odyssey 2001. Absolutely. No, it, it's, uh, no, I, I, like, there's some classic stories, especially in the old science fiction yeah. magazines coming up with ideas. I started doing World War II, the military is like, what are you doing? How did you find out about this? And it's like, we, we didn't, we just made it up. 
right, right? That's one of the more famous. The atom bomb is one of the more famous, like like consequential of science fiction and science kind of happening at the same time. Um, how science, science fiction is like a some people uh, writers or creators are thinking how based on what they know how the future may look like either is a something positive we want to inspire to do or as a cautionary tale what we want to avoid and then they write a story and by having a popular story especially if it's made into a hollywood uh, film uh, it actually influences a lot more people than um, scientific article that published in some magazine that maybe 10,000 people read, all of them are scientists. Well, it's, yeah, it, it, well, it's also, it, again, going back to what you said, the, 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 storytelling is a language. It's a much more universal language than than some of the more scientific, technical terms. A lot of people aren't around, exposed to that language on a regular basis, but they are exposed to stories, and, and those stories can be good. I mean, those stories can be great, and they can inspire, or they can be cautionary, Tales, as you said. So here's here's my here's my thought and 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 thinking about like you're talking about like writing. I like it usually my stories. Now I've gotten older, wiser. Or there's a little bit of both, where they explores the good and the bad of everything that's hap that's happening in a in a particular concept. Like I like Foundation is great because it explores the idea of building a building a better system. From the ashes of an older one that's about to fall apart completely, um, it, but I, my my favorite stuff my favorite stuff there was you know the fact that even the plan as Selden saw it way back in the day evolved into something different by the time it got to the very end of the series um, because he, although I although has not been finished the full thing because he di he died right it, it, four five and six go a completely different concept of a very different kind of collective than what one, two, and three are described. Part of that is because that's not got older. But I think part of that too, I, I really, really loved about it was the fact is not every, again, everything that we introduce to the world comes with a good and comes with a bad, right? And and I think, I think the best stuff, I think the best science fiction, right, reflects the good and the bad. And shows where, where where it can be a great thing, or where it can be a terrible thing. What about you? What do you think? And if it's terrible, then you probably want to avoid it. Probably. Or at least be cautious about it. And no, yeah, we if we do that, we have to be very very careful. Yeah. And you don't if you don't have this story and just go on and on and uh, then it could be very it could be very dangerous. Yeah. So we talk, you talk about space. Where do you stand on artificial intelligence? I'm curious, because that that that's definitely one of those ones where it could go, it could go one way or the other, right? It, it, um, I think, what like if we're talking a science fiction story, my I think one of my favorites of all time for Star Trek is Measure of a Man, where Data was held on trial for being a sentient being, and what I really liked about that was was the whole concept that we're creating it like this possibility of a, of a race of intel like the, him being alive and becoming a race and how we treat that race is an inflection upon us and i i really love that episode because it shows the both both what intel what a machine how we look at machines traditionally when Riker examines data it's brutal but after showing that in spite of all these things he's alive he has th thoughts and hopes and fears and he's aware of his existence that it's finite I thought that was like amazing stuff, but I didn't never... like it. What? I didn't like it. You didn't like it? No. Why didn't you like it? Well, we talked about it the last time about uh, the finite thing. Yeah, no, 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 no. It, uh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about immortality. I'm talking about the fact that Data was aware that he was alive, right? You know, immortality. We, we won't go there again. That that we, we again. You're gonna live forever, and that's cool. I wish you luck. I, 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 what I'm talking about though is we have artificial intelligence today. Now it's not sophisticated yet, but you've seen it in a very, a various Facebook try a little something with artificial intelligence and they shut that down like immediately. Then, um, I mean, stock market uses artificial intelligence. Um, we, we've seen computer controlled landings of planes. We've seen all kinds of things in the last 10, 20 years where it's like, 
these machines can do a lot of incredible things and they're faster they think faster than we do in a lot of ways so like where do you stand on it where do you think that's going to go i'll start by saying that i'm not an expert in this field. yeah i mean i, I come from it i'm my yeah. job is in it and I'm not artificial intelligence but uh, <laughs> information technologies uh, but i'm not specialized in uh, artificial intelligence no okay so uh, and also, I want to say that there are some very cautionary stories that we've mm -hmm. seen, like the Terminator or the Matrix, where machines become smarter than us, and then they try to take over the world. And of course, uh, the human spirit win. I don't think if somebody's thousand or a trillion times more smarter than us, we can't win. Uh, but let's go from the start. So the basic, uh, 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 there is something called general artificial intelligence and like uh, specialized, uh, artificial intelligence is specialized in a specific field. So currently what we see is a progress, not in general artificial intelligence, but in dedicated system. Uh, we had in 1997, the first time uh, the best computer was able to win a chess game against the best chess player, uh, Kasparov. Uh, uh, then we had uh 2003 we were able to decipher or the human gene genome this is a project that took 15 years and it cost a few billion dollars today you can uh, map the human genome for a few hundred dollars or maybe a few thousand dollars and it won't take you 15 years it will take you a day you know a few hours and there are companies that do a partial uh, mapping and so the field is improving very, very fast, exponentially. Uh, I think uh, not too long ago uh, was, uh, I think uh, maybe two years ago, the best computer, Deep, Deep Mind, I think, um, was managed to win Go. It's another game. Uh, about last month or two months ago, uh, first time a computer was uh, this some um, this uh, positive view was able to uh, pretty accurately decipher or uh, able to do protein folding which is awesome thing because we were, will be able to develop medicine based on this folding uh, so in the past this is something that could cost a hundred thousand dollars or so for one protein and our hundreds of thousands of different proteins uh, in, in the world. Now it can get down to a few dollars. So uh, using artificial intelligence, uh, there is a concept called deep mind and deep learning that machine can actually do things better than us. Uh, so th this field is uh, progressing very fast. And uh, now that the big thing that everybody's talking about is self-driving cars and uh, we may if we spoke earlier about Elon Musk he has another company not just SpaceX he has a company called Tesla uh, he believe uh, will have a full self-drive by the end of this year mm -hmm. so maybe it's wrong maybe it will be next year right now the biggest problem is to identify signs like traffic lights and signs and know how to decipher them that they only know how to avoid other cars and how not to eat pedestrians but Cars will be able to drive by themselves, and this is not the far future. It's going to happen soon. Oh yeah, no, it, it, they they've done some actual even they've had some field tests that have gone wrong. Like Uber tried a few things that did not go well, but the fact that they've been doing self-driving cars, uh, um, they've been they've been tampering by playing with this seriously for the last five years, and because I mean, on the flip side, I mean the other thing too is it's going to change everything. I can go into now into a car and I don't have to worry. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, there's no such thing as a responsible driver anymore. The machine will take, it, it'll be almost like the old day. Like this is like old days when you got drunk, the horse would take you home. Well, you couldn't do that with the car. Right. Uh, but now you get drunk. Now the car is going to be like the horse. It can take you home. <laughs> it can take you home now. If that's what, if that's what, uh, if that's what it wants to do, but it can also, um, 
So, I mean, it, it's going to change everything. Like, like right now, because of the pandemic, there's a lot more Uber drivers, get the dishes, a lot of that stuff right now. But if you're a company, if you're a company with a delivery, with delivery in five years, if you have, I, I mean, it'll be, it'll be expensive at first. So let's say 10 years, you might not have a delivery driver anymore. There may not be a delivery service as we know it. Taxi driver. I think the, the, the number one job right now in the States for, for, for males, it's truck drivers or drivers in general. These jobs are going away. Oh yeah. They're going to, they're going to go like all of them. I think like, the only the only other thing I'm not sure about with that is um, the other part is you know this you're in, you're in Calgary where the weather is very freakishly cold and technology can can wreak havoc in certain mountainous areas. There might still be some driving for that, maybe, right? But no, I mean you, you can see it like the writing's on the wall. The, the era of the driver is coming to an end, and it'll be cool to still know how to drive. But for the most, I, I mean, I, you could literally see it and thought like once that's that's perfected it, perfected, cars may not even come with a steering wheel or brake pedals. They might be completely rebuilt for comfort. So you know? we, we are, but, yeah, but we are still talking about specialized system that can do one thing better than humans in one specific field. So as time passes, computers are becoming more and more powerful and the software are becoming more and more powerful. And the machine can learn by itself in this field to become better and better and better. So, I, when we talk to the other side about the general artificial intelligence, or more so about a machine or a computer that gain consciousness and he's aware, yeah, I, I, I'm aware, I'm alive. This is may still be far away, but even without that, artificial in, intelligence could have a huge impact on our planet and our on our species. And I don't know, it could, it, it, theoretically, it could be good, but it could be bad. Like, what are we going to do with all the people? Well, it's, well, here's, well, here's the thing, well, well, here's the thing that like this, here, here's the thing. We, it takes us approximately on average seven years to master something. Part of that, part of that is simply based on the fact that we have lives. I have to eat. I have to go to work. I have to do other things that require my attention. So I don't have the luxury of going focusing on a task for a very ex I, I I might be able to do it for a few hours, but we're not we're not talking we're not talk. But that's it. And then something else will come up. I'll need to sleep. I'll need to do things. A machine can just focus on one task, right? Constantly. It's not just that. It is said that you're correct. It takes about 10,000 hours to be specialized in something. Even if you want to be a writer, you need to say you write a million words or the write for 10,000 hours, and then you'll be a, a good writer. Uh, the thing with artificial intelligence, so you take all this machine learning and deep learning and the machine that they found way of doing stuff like self-driving or whatever, play uh, Go, uh, fold protein or do other jobs. But once that machine eventually, even if it takes more than 10,000 hours, figure it out. Uh, let's say as human, if you want to train a doctor, it takes at least seven years. And you want two doctors, you need another person to study it, uh, for seven years. The machine, you just take the software with the database, copy it over in a minute or a few seconds, and you don't need the extra seven years. You, you can have an army or a fleet of machines that are all uh, equally smart and continue to learn and share the information. And it doesn't take a lot. Once you have it, once you know, once you know how to do a specific task, you don't need to train somebody else for seven years in order to do that. No. It's maybe a few like weeks, it's maybe, not. maybe even just a week, like not even like not in the same, not in the same degree. So no, that, that's a big thing. Like, speed is something we, we the speed, it's not a week it's seconds yeah the knowledge transferring knowledge yes but i mean there would still be have to be practice wouldn't there i mean no no the machine will not have to practice it will have all the practice that all the generations of machine before it had it, it will it will already gain all this practice it doesn't need the practice to relearn something that another machine learned it just take what they learn and they know it mm -hmm. there you go so I mean that's that's, so that's going to influence the world. Yeah. So I, I so there is the 
still talking about unconscious machines, so we are not yet at talking about Terminator or no, 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 no. Matrix, but uh, there is the paper clips dilemma. Or, uh, so let's say you take a machine, a specialized machine, and you tell, tell that machine, make paper clips the most efficient way you can. So they, I don't know, use nano technology and they convert the entire planet to a machine that build paper clips and kill everyone because it doesn't want to kill us. I mean, it doesn't care. It, it wants to be build paper clips more efficiently. And in order to build a paper clip more efficiently, it, it needs to kill all humans. So that's what it's going to do. So take a very specialized machine and it could be devastating if you don't want to care about apocalypse. it. Apocalypse, that would be, that'd be amazing. Um, Frighteningly, that's frighteningly depressing. I don't have alcohol. I mean, that's that's there. <laughs> you did to me there, buddy. But um, so we, it could be the artificial intelligence. It could be something very, very useful for humanity, uh, like what we heard about the protein folding. It could cure cancer, or cure poverty, create a much, much more wealth. It could eliminate scarcity in the world. Uh, and find solution to problem and they're definitely going to do better job than all the politicians we have but there is a risk that it may go in the wrong direction okay. well it, uh, or in a direction that we didn't intend it with dire consequences well it, the thing the thing is right intelligence by a certain nature especially if it's learning on its own it's going to come to its own conclusions about how the world works and life as we know it now will have a completely different meaning so on the one hand on on the one hand um it could be very very bad then again maybe the machine will just eventually conclude that honestly just leave human beings alone they'll just do our thing and live and let live right then again, might just say, you know what? I'm too big for this planet. I want to go see what else what else is out there, and might just walk away. That's also the entire possibility as well. Um, so you're but, talking about a machine that uh, have consciousness. Yes. Okay. Even so even, is, even but even. Hi, Jag. How you doing? How you doing, Jag? This is Jag Trust. She's she's awesome. She's she's uh, hi, Jag. yeah Hello. yeah, but um. It's okay. We got. I you missed you missed Jag me getting trolled by a dude named Metamorphosis or whatever his name is, and and yeah, and uh, you know. Then we we're just talking about artificial intelligence possibly doing us all. It's all good. I mean, it is a difficult night. It's a typical Wednesday night. Um, but uh, well, I I've said this in other. I I said it's like it's it's interesting because it'll flip. Our history has essentially been about getting work done. Essentially, the idea of people people work like work dictating entirely how our civilizations have functioned, and we're going to come to a point very shortly where that will no longer be the case. Whether unconscious AI or conscious AI doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is that there's a machine. There is a machine that can out lawyer a lawyer. Right, you know we're screwed when when you get to that a doctor, point. a doctor, and a, yeah, be better farmer, and definitely be a better chess player. That that one we already have. Be better drivers. That's gonna we're gonna have. That, soon. That, that, the, the chess one was a misnomer, a little bit of a misnomer, but I mean the fact that they can win the chess is absolutely, um, absolutely a thing. Um, but no, the, the 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 thing is like they literally I, I I can't remember where I saw this. They actually did a they actually made a machine try to be like a lawyer, and they actually could lawyer out lawyer a lawyer. It was like <gasps> we're screwed. We are just screwed as we know it. Yeah. Um, but we are gonna it's gonna change our whole concept because we are no longer the idea of the worker the worker mentality. Um, that we have today will not exist. On one hand, we'll be kind of, I mean, instead of, it's almost like um, slaves were slaves were originally made slaves because they were, they provided power to whatever empire or civilization existed. And then when technology came, it changed that, right? It changed that into something, into something like what we see 
what we see tonight or today and the fact that now i have a light bulb i can get warmth electricity and that saves so much time and effort and energy that today even though i am not by any stretch of the imagination the wealthiest person out there i am still far wealthier in this place in time than almost any other point in history which is mind-boggling like that's that's been a big change the next change is well now you don't need people for all but maybe a handful of things and at that point you're going to be like well what do we do we don't need to do anything the system now is completely autonomous of us so that's where we're headed it looks like and yeah it's, it's kind of scary um, a, lo a lot of jobs are going to be eliminated eliminated oh, oh, we've, we've seen it in the past we said about the uh, when the industrial age started before that uh, 80 or 90 percent of humanity were working in agriculture mm -hmm. today is maybe two or three percent and it's not that the rest of humanity are unemployed they are simply moved to other things now a lot of jobs are going to be eliminated in the next few decades due to artificial intelligence mm -hmm. what will there be other jobs uh, can we learn something new that machine cannot do better than humans and still be part of the economy or maybe only a few experts will be working and the rest of the population will or maybe, work? Nobody, or maybe nobody will be working it'll be very i mean that that's entirely a possibility as well right um not so, and and, and, so we are talking about things that uh, AI may cause, and we are not even talking about the malicious AI that no. will terminate us. They just doing their job. Yeah. Well, so like uh, one of my favorite, like very old school comics I still really like was um, Magnus Robot Fighter. It's very, it's an old old concept. In the year four thousand, they train a man to be able to smash robots. But the reason they did that was because at that point in history, mankind had become so dependent on the machines that they had lost their ability to be independent. And so a robot literally trains a man to teach men how to be independent again, which I think is a very interesting take on that concept. And not every and not every robot was malicious. Um, some were, some some despised. Like I, I, I drew one actually not too long ago. His name was H eight. He hated human beings, but not every robot was that. It's just robots became robots rule took over. Um, we are we use tools. We use tools to make our lives easier. And ironically, now um, we might become we may become um, completely. The tools might be better than we are. That's that. Yeah, that's like twenty year, twenty years ago I was driving and I was navigating using maps. You know, to go to a new country. And, open the map and now we have GPS I'm I'm for sure I'm not as good navigator as I want as I was 10 or 20 years ago I, I, I still don't actually use GPS I, I I just don't I I I don't like it it just absolutely when I was a kid I would I'd love maps I would love I, doing I wouldn't go to a place like LA without the GPS so actually there's still places that GPS doesn't do you any good there is like a spot in New Mexico I'm not I shit you not where you will go with with the GPS and GPS will actually give you a city that hasn't been built yet. It doesn't exist. It's just it's just a construct in the machine, literally. So I LA is an interesting animal for sure. Uh, and definitely coming into the city, I might be tempted to use a GPS, but I I still prefer maps. I, I mean, as weird as that sounds, I still prefer maps. I I don't. Um, I like figuring out my own way through things. And even when I travel to this point, to this day and age, I still prefer figuring it out on my own because, so, uh, you know, I've always have. It's kind of one of those things, like call me anach anachronistic. It may not be the most efficient way to learn to, to, to it, right. but I, 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 eventually I don't need the GPS at all. I'll just figure yeah, out my own way It, it could definitely save you time. Oh, no, it does. Absolutely. Initially, on the first On the first half of it, absolutely but towards the last half of it no eventually i don't need it at all so it's like you know i i i still like learning i still like learning that kind of stuff it's, it, i've always have ever since i was a kid so that won't 
that will not change, I don't think. But there are other things I have given up for sure. Phone numbers, for example. I used to be a lot better at memorizing phone numbers than I am now. Now I'm terrible. I still can remember a few. There's still a few that are in my head forever, but... Well, it's not necessarily a bad thing because you, you lose some skill that you had before. But that give your brain, your brain is still have the same capacity to focus on new skills that you absolutely. didn't have before. So oh, now oh, you, you, the, the, the repeating or the memory of simple things that in the past you need to allocate, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 percent of your brain capacity toward them. Now you don't need it. You can use it for other things. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no. It, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's, give take. there's absolutely give and take to everything. So, yeah. so it's spoke, never always yeah. there. It's, okay, it's so never, we spoke about the. Okay, let you finish. Oh, sorry. I just say it, it, it's there's there's good and bad with everything, and it, I think and next to that, I'm going back to what we said about science fiction earlier. That's my favorite kind of science fiction, where you look at the good and the bad, and kind of and not necessarily have a perfect answer, right? Because sometimes 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 good and bad are, are stuck together, right? And you have to decide whether or not you really really want this thing or not. Sometimes it's more trouble than it's worth. Other, like I think of like the holodeck in Star Trek, more trouble than it's worth, right? But, but um, sometimes, sometimes it's, there's necessary evils that come with some things, and sometimes you just, you know what, you know what? It's like, like much like with everybody, everybody's got good, everybody's got bad, but you know what? It's worth it. You know, and I, I and again, I like it when I like, I like that those kind of stories where you have. A concept and then you have to come up with a solution and everybody has their own take on how it works yeah so that's pretty much like real life yeah in my short story collection escape velocity actually over there there is an artificial intelligence with consciousness that decided to take over the world and uh, destroy humanity and uh, somehow they managed to confine it only to earth so some colonies outside earth managed to survive but uh, they also did it with uh, another artificial intelligence. So what we are going to see, so we don't have anything that computer that can have a general artificial intelligence can speak like human. The human brain capacity is huge, like especially in a video processing, understanding picture, understanding audio. Our capacity, I think it's something like a processing power, parallel processing power is something like then in the power of 16 or even 18 floating point per second. And the most powerful supercomputers we have right now on the planet are just about to get there. They're not even there. And I'm talking about huge computers that takes many, many rooms and uh, they cost billions of dollars, mostly in China or in the States. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, there is a website called Top 500 that measure the top 500 uh, most powerful computer, computers on the planet. And they're coming up with a new report every six months. So you, to see, you can see that the trend is it's in the logarithmic. logarithmic uh, it, it looks like a straight line, which means it's, it's not linear, it's exponential. And what I saw, what you can see if you go there and see the processing power of the most powerful computer or the average of the 500 most powerful computer or the sum, it doesn't matter. It's the same trend. It's a bit, a bit below, but the same line. You can see that every 11 or 12 years, the most powerful computer is about 1,000 times more powerful than the most powerful computer 11 years earlier. Which means, let's say, in a year or two or five years, we have a computer that reached the same power as the human brain. Then, 11 years later, you have a computer that is 1,000 times more powerful. And 22 years later, it's a million times more powerful. 33 years later, 33 years later it's a billion times more powerful so if that computer or others that are i don't know only a million times more powerful than us are able to run a software let's say something that simulate the human brain or other software that gain consciousness 
then you are going to see something that we we have no clue how to deal with it. Maybe you're right, like in a game theory, and that something will decide, yeah, it's better to cooperate with humans and to help humanity. It's very much possible, and I very much hope it will happen. Uh, but it's, I don't know, like us and insects or bacteria or amoeba. Like if we, I don't know, we need to buy a new, uh, to, to build a new highway, we want to, and there is an anthill, we may don't want to be malicious to these ants, but we, we don't care. We, we are a thousand times, billion times, trillion mm -hmm. times smarter, and we need the highway. And there, if there is a anthill, we'll go over it. Oh, oh, it. Absolutely. I think, it, like, I, I tend to go with the whole concept of there's a way I cut they call the supreme intelligence concept, which is like we build the, the thing greater than us to ironically worship. I think what inevitably happens in that scenario is, you know, we, if there's something that much greater, I think it, ultimately people will people will do that. I mean, we it's it, it just it's just the nature. The nature of nature is he who rules or he who builds right here right he, he who is the biggest the strongest the fiercest generally gets their way and everything else kind of doesn't matter i mean that's evolution that it's kind of its cruelest form but it that is how it kind of works right look at it in nature um i i again it, i mean the, the big the big question there is if we just say we built something like that what does a machine like that want yeah, right. so I can answer the first question. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, some people that I uh, debated with, are saying that it is impossible to build something smarter than us than us because uh, we need to be smart in order to program it. No. So the the idea is that something simple cannot build something more complex than it, but that's not true. This concept. One example is our DNA. If you look at the DNA that we have in the nucleus, the chromosomes we have. Uh, it's an instruction set that has something like 100 million, uh, 100 billion instruction, I think, or million. No, I think 100 million. So that's, we think it's complex, but it's not near as complex as the human brain. And still, the chromosomes we have are able to build a brain that is way, way more complex by a few billions and a few trillions more complex than DNA. And the way to do it, they just uh, took a pattern and reproduced it many, many times and let that brain learn from itself, from the environment, based on input and uh, output to the environment, to and from, from the environment. And that way, all the neurons we have in the brain are a lot more complex than the DNA. So a simple DNA can build something more complex than us, uh, than it. And in the same thing, we that have a human brain capacity, we can build machines that are billion or trillion times faster and more powerful than us using the computer science uh, methodologies and then let it run software uh, that learn for itself and at some point it may gain consciousness and it may become a lot smarter than, than us and that machine may be able to build other machine a lot smarter than it and they will build other machine a lot smarter than it so well, we're going to have a very interesting uh, concept here and we have uh, entities that are way way too smarter than us in, in a few decades and well we simply it, have we are not smart enough to know how they will behave we don't know no oh no we have no idea we have we don't have a clue they might they might say hey I'm gonna wipe you out but again, the goldfish say, don't, hey. don't know uh, goldfish don't know how human behave how, how human thinks but, but, but it's impacted by how the human behave then again then again i i can't wait until see intelligence by its very nature is varied i can't wait to the equivalent of the um how the, to the, I, I, to the quote unquote dumb robot whatever like because intelligence is diverse right and you'll know you'll know when i i think when intelligence the nature of intelligence is so diverse and the nature of how our species works so intelligence is at a very curve there's so many degrees of intelligence on so many different levels how you and I view the world are very differently. How someone else, how someone else sees the world is also very different. They might like, and sometimes the people that seem like the most flighty or the or or or, or how do we put this? Most most space, the biggest space cases, for lack of a better term, right? There's sometimes they measure 
extremely high on the intelligence scale sometimes. So it's like, there's, so I know like we'll be done, like we'll like, we'll, we, we will gracefully bow out of being the dominant whatever, when, when and it, when and or if the intelligence on each individual robot is completely different. Because I, again, nature is, I, generally speaking, nature diversifies. And when, when it gets to that point where, where intelligence, the artificial intelligence completely diversifies, it'll be a fully flushed out life form. And at that point, um, at fully at that point, that's it. I mean, there, there, there'll be nothing else. I mean, if you can make copies of itself that are better, um, but still the same kind of intelligence, it hasn't like... No, it happen. will not be the same. It will be smarter. Oh, yeah. So it continues to grow exponentially. Well, no, no. Smarter, yes, but how to put this? Because intelligence has so much, again, there, there's different degrees of intelligence. There's different kinds of intelligences, right? Will an artificial intelligence specialize in a different form of intelligence, doing whatever task, whatever it's doing? Or will it be a jack of all trades, all encompassing? Will it be something else? right no one can say for sure and that's i and that's why it frightens us to some degree because it, it is the unknown but on the other hand i mean we seem to be mar marching toward it day by day so yep. we are now in a race to because every country every company they want the best artificial intelligence because if they don't and the other will then the other will outcompete them so they develop as well. So we have a, like we had a nuclear race or a Cold War race to build bigger, bigger bombs. Now we have a race to build better and better, smarter and smarter artificial intelligence systems. Yep. The race is speed. Uh, right now, the bigger, the big competitors are the United States and China. Yep. Yep. And, and one of them, and one country cannot uh, decide, okay, I'm not going to do that because they are going to be left behind them be dominated by the other so well it's, uh, it's it, waste, and we don't know how it's going to end it's well it's be... interesting because it's also it's like going back to something i said about the business models at the very beginning right if you look at i i read a this is, might seem off topic but i remember i reading about a stock ironically how how deals are done in the stock market and one of the biggest things being competed for is speed the speed of the transaction, because even in, within the microseconds of a transaction being completed, the price may go up and down. So there, there was there were literally lots in New York that were close to these machines that were processing these deals. They would be charging two hundred million dollars to be uh, like per like space for this comp for these companies to trade faster. Right, and the, the proximity does did, does matter even a little bit, and that inch is sometimes a huge difference, and then that's a big part of the intelligence race. It's all about speed at the end of the day, being faster and being more efficient and better than the person around us. It's a weird, we're a weird species, man. We are a weird, weird species. <laughs> yeah, but it is what it is. Um, let's think here. Sue. So, we're going to go back to space and I think we're going to wrap this up. I've, uh, so, r r r so here's my question. Going in outer space, I know it, it, as a concept excites you. If you, but if you only could go to one place in outer space and you didn't think you, you could actually reach, right? Where would you like to go? Where like, you could actually reach? Well, like, like you said within the galaxy, within this galaxy, let's say there's a solar system, our solar system, right? Like obviously, you put your name in for the moon. But if you had your way, like wherever, wherever, everything you know about it going in outer space, is there a particular space a spot you want to go personally? First of all, the, the best things uh, place to be in the solar system is a planet called Earth. Mm -hmm. It's best place. No, 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 I, I get it. Outside Earth, I I think I would be curious to to visit a Titan. Okay. One of the moons of Saturn. Uh, so uh, Titan is a very interesting, perhaps even more than Mars, uh, because it had an atmosphere, 
Uh, Mars also had an atmosphere, but the uh, Mars atmosphere is maybe one percent, maybe a little bit less than one percent than Earth. And but Titan is the only celestial body in the solar system that had the. Uh, uh, the other one is, uh, of course, uh, Venus has the atmosphere, but Titan has an atmosphere that is similar to Earth. I mean, it doesn't have oxygen, but it's about one point five the atmospheric pressure of Earth. It made uh, primarily from uh, uh, nitrogen and uh, some other components, uh, hydrocarbons. And it also the only body, celestial body outside of the hills that, that has lakes of uh, some kind of liquid. It's, it's not water because it's very, very cold. Um, so it's very interesting moon. Also, it doesn't have a lot of radiation, so it's actually safer than Mars. Uh, gravity is a bit less. And there may be life on Titan. Um, so the only life we are familiar with is life on Earth that is based on water, on liquid water. And there are theories that maybe life that uh, built from DNA and chromosome and RNA uh, that from the same components that our life on Earth exists may exist also on uh, underneath the surface on Mars and perhaps in the past in the past it existed on Mars perhaps it exists in the upper atmosphere on uh, uh, Venus maybe in underwater ocean in some of the moons of uh, Jupiter and Saturn like Europa may have under maybe they have a we know they have under, the outside it says ice but maybe 10 kilometers deep inside the earth there may be liquid water and there is a small chance maybe life exists there so titan has this one it's made the uh, the crust is made a big percentage of it made from ice water and maybe there is liquid water deep in the deep underneath the surface but on top of that, it has hydrocarbon environment that mostly made methane and other components. And it has lakes that made from natural gas or something similar to natural gas. And there is a, there are theories that maybe a completely different type of life forms involved in this kind of solvent that is different than water. So if we can go there and find life that is completely different than how our life was created or evolved, then this is a, means that maybe the universe is teeming with life. This is going to be something completely different. Which is cool. So maybe you get it is an interested uh, moon. Yeah, so maybe you'll get to go there someday. Like I said, like as we talked last time, you're going to live forever. So, yeah, I mean, it's somewhere to look forward to, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, right now. It's a, the problem is the distance. If you use reg, regular chemical rockets like we have, uh, so a trip to the moon is three days. A trip to Mars is about six months. A trip to the Saturn uh, uh, moon system will take about seven years. Yeah. So we cannot go there right now. Not as human. We can send robotic missions. Uh, but if we will develop better rockets, maybe nuclear rockets, maybe nuclear fusion or li uh, light cells or something that can take us a lot faster, then maybe humans can go to Titan. Or maybe if we can develop something like suspended an animation, go to sleep for seven years and then wake up and... Yeah, we, well, we talked about that at the very beginning, right? That, like, that's a classic, that's a classic thing, right? But anyways... My friend, I think we have an interview here. What do you think? So why don't you talk about your YouTube channel? Talk about what, you, what people are, what people can expect from it. And and honestly, how are you doing with it? Are you happy with it? With my channel or your yeah, channel? Yeah, talk about your channel. Like this, this, this is promo time. Promo time. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to reproduce what I'm doing on Quera uh, with my channel. On my channel, I spoke primarily on the scientific matters mostly on space so i select a topic and i talk about it and then i compare it to science fiction stories that are discussing the same topic try to envision how this may lead us and yes i try to release every week or every two weeks uh, a new video 
that is on a do with PowerPoint slides, I'm talking, pack, pack, pack. and so what's been your favorite one you've done? Like, what if, you, if people were to start with your stuff, where would which, which video would you recommend? The one we spoke earlier about rotating space stations, okay. Uh, there is a video uh, that has a bit a bit more than a thousand views uh, that uh, compared colonizing Mars versus colonizing space station with artificial gravity. Uh, it, it's it's called O'Neill cylinders. Do you have the link? Uh, right now? Yeah, right now. We, we we are on a live chat, my friend. We can put it out there so people can actually just see it. YouTube. Uh... I need to go there. Okay, I'm there right now. Yeah, sorry, that was me. Okay, so where do I put it? Private chat, private chat. There is a place to. Yeah, the good like this yeah. is the good stuff. Like, like I mean, I mean, this way people can people can check you out. Find your aunt and out, send us message. Is this one? Well, you know, you want to send to me by Facebook, and I'll put it on. I'll put it on the chat link so people can find it. Or oh yeah, Facebook has a link to it. Yeah. So send, send, send it to me, like send me a message, copy and paste her and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll copy it and I'll put it up on, uh, I'll put it up here and I'll put it up, uh, I'll put it up on Facebook so people can actually see it and uh, go from there. Yeah. And, uh... There we go. Yeah. So hold on a second here. Did you get it? Ah, uh, not quite. Ah, it's the new space flight revolution. Invest in space. I think that's the one uh, on top. If you go to home, that's the new uh, space flight revolution. No, Mars versus O'Neill space colonies. Maybe I'll click on the video. Directly. Okay, there, there you go. I see it. Hold on a second here. Done. So guys, you want to watch that episode right there, putting it on there. I'm also putting it right here. This is... There you go. Not I'm not that big, so right now, I, if somebody put any comment there, I'll elevate it and respond to it. Yeah, I know. That's it. That's, it. that's, that's kind of why I'm, I'm putting it. Like I just put it on both my Facebook and there so people can actually see it. And if they want to do it, that's that's great. So Ron, And Ron's YouTube channel, for anyone wondering, is called Sci and Sci-Fi. I just turned on all notifications because I apparently didn't do that for my science. So now I know. Um, there we go. So that's your channel. You got a book coming out soon again, buddy? I'm still in process, so I don't have a date. Okay. So type I'm in, slow writer. Yeah. So type in time is your latest release. So, all right. So his channel is called Science Sci Fi. So, how else can people find you? How to, uh, they can go to the channel. There are links. Uh, they have uh, social media, uh, Quora. Maybe uh, go to my Amazon page. <laughs> no worries, Jack. Like uh, everything is interlinked to each other. So if, if you go to the channel, the channel will take you to Facebook, Amazon. Uh, I, I put uh, all the links, uh, uh, like four or five links, even LinkedIn, if, if you yeah. want to hire more than IT guy. Yeah, he, he's an IT guy. He also likes games. One, the, the next time I get you on here, buddy, we, 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 you should tell me some of this, some of your game stories. Jag is, Jag is, uh, I think we get a kick out some of those too. All right, everybody, that is tonight's episode of Just Joshing. I want to thank Ron for coming on here and uh, being a, a good sport. And we talked about the fate of the world and how we're all doomed and gloomed. But we also, I mean, the romance, science fiction as well. For anyone that wanted to watch this, uh, you can support this chat, this this particular show a couple different ways subscribe to my podcast you can do so either through twitch no problem jag thanks for the stream thank you um, thanks for coming 
So you want to support me is twitch.tv slash just joshing podcast. My YouTube channel is Joshua Pentelaresco. Uh, beyond all that, guys, stay inspired. Tomorrow night's guest is Dave Butler. I can't wait to actually have him on. Do you know care. how I know? I don't know how I know Dave Butler. No, how do you know Dave Butler? Okay, uh, I tried to sell my my book at Typhoon Time to another publisher. Every day, everybody told me no. So at some point, I, I sold it to Wildfire Press. That's a uh, the publishing house house of uh, Kevin J. Anderson. And one day, I get a, a call from David Butler. Hey, I'm uh, the acquisition editor for uh, Wildfire Press. And I, I, you sent us a book seven months ago. Are you still interested to to sell it to us? Yes. Okay, so I'll start reading it. I, I think about half an hour later, he contact me again. Hey, I actually like the story. Uh, <laughs> you sure? You sure? Can I? Uh, you, you sure you, <laughs> you want to go with us? I'm a big, old, bigger publisher. No, yeah, yeah, I want, I want, I want that. Okay, so that's how I know it. He bought my book. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Dave's so say hi. Say hi to him when you interview him. No, I uh, totally will. Yeah. No. Y- y- so, yeah, my guest tomorrow, look him up, Jag. It's, his name is DJ Butler. He's honestly one of the sweetest dudes. The last time we talked was, was a lot of fun. Looking forward to that conversation. Uh, definitely tomorrow night, same time, I'll, I'll be doing it. Beyond all that, stay inspired, stay shining in the dark. I'll see you guys tomorrow.